Hey everybody, welcome back to Uncommon Truth Podcast. Hello, hello. Vicky has returned yeah. to us. I've been a- AWOL. Yeah, Steve's yeah. here. The band is back together. Yeah, the band is back. Yeah. The band of brothers? No. Yes. The, well, that yeah. would be awkward. Yeah. Okay. I don't think you're a brother. No, no. I'm a sister. A sister. Yeah, that's right. You were at the uh, Father's House Women's Retreat oh, last fabulous. weekend. How mm-hmm. was that? It was fabulous. It rained like crazy. I actually used an umbrella first time this winter. Hmm. Um, it, for people who don't know, this is odd weather we're having yeah. in the middle of May, right? Well, it rains in May regularly. Uh, it's yeah. been a crazy, cra- can't we just agree it's been a crazy winter, spring? It's only crazy because of how many years of drought in a row. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. like, So everybody forgets easy. <laughs> that's that, true. You know, the normal thing is May, May has yeah. a yeah. fair amount of rain every mm-hmm. year. It feels, and the weather's been beautiful. feels like for me, though, like... I mean, I've been around since 2010, and this has seems wow. to have been the wettest winter that, yeah. or coolest winter I can remember, or it, in the longest period from, it was like from November till now, it's, it's still been, been felt just rainy. like England. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. <laughs> just like, and you know, they said that this is the wettest winter on, on record. Wow. We've had the most snow that we've ever, ever had, which is like, thank you, Jesus. We're maybe so climate change is real. Yeah, maybe. You never but, know. Uh, yeah. I don't understand <laughs> that. It should be hotter, shouldn't it? I don't know. <laughs> not, anyway. But praise the Lord, we're back. But you had a good time at the retreat? It was great. Um, yeah. We had 80 women, <clears throat> and Pam, if you listened um, a few weeks ago, Pam spoke, and she was fabulous, and uh, just some real conversions, real real heartfelt things, and then I got to talk, speak about how when you're on a retreat, you're always on a mountaintop, mm-hmm. and then you, but you live in the valley. Mm-hmm. And so you're going back to the valley, and, and having your first love is so important. It was a very wonderful time. That's great. I loved. I love our yearly getaways. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, should we uh, dive in? To dive today? in. That's dive right. In. Yeah. We've done uh, <clears throat> we've done a number of these message points. I think this is our sixth so, one. So the message points of what? The Father's house. Church. Correct. Um, so this is, today is we're going to talk about the importance of forgiveness. Oh, the Steve, importance. you need to t- you need to listen to this one. <laughs> Take know. notes. I know how to lead you then. <laughs> I know how to guide you. There you go. Yes. So we, you know, the other week with Pam, we did, we talked about healing wounds, and you know, the, it was mentioned that the biggest well, step is forgiveness, forgiveness, but we didn't really talk that much about it and theologically yes. why so i thought it would be good while that's still in our recent memory that's to good go a little deeper into this topic uh, so. just just a disclaimer because our, our beautiful pam who was here a few weeks ago had no idea we recorded um were filmed yes so in case you in radio land or podcast land do not know we are actually filming as well correct yes. you can watch us on youtube you can see us well, if you want to the voice it's, with yes. the faces you know, it's easy to miss the three cameras that are <laughs> pointing dick. at us at the bright lights right at me with lights on that's with for red you, lights Pam. pointing at me in case you forgot uh, so yeah that's yeah. funny she she had no idea we were yeah. filming yeah. yeah and she said and she said oh i had makeup on and she said she didn't and i'm like well yeah because the lights and the cameras kind of gave it away for me <laughs> so that's for you pam uh, uh, yeah so today importance of forgiveness yes um i'm gonna start by uh reading from matthew chapter six if you want to read along with us you can do that uh this is ver- starting verse nine uh jesus says pray then in this way our father who is in heaven yep. Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we have also forgiven our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. That's right. For if you forgive others their their transgressions, your your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, then your father will not forgive you your transgressions. So, huh. there, we'll, we'll not forgive you. <laughs> will not. Yes. It says will not. Yes. What does that mean? Will not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what exactly does that mean, will not? Do you know, Steve? means you're going to stand before God with all your sins yeah. shining forth. Yeah. Wow. I don't think that works out very good for anyone. I don't think we want that one. Take the no. other door. Yeah. Yeah. Just terrible. That's but the thing is, 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 you, is I read these the, the Jesus words. Mm-hmm. Um, last night he was taught. I think it was in Corinthians that our speaker was talking about and says, "Will not inherit the kingdom." Mm-hmm. Um, I, I was actually thinking this morning. I wonder if I should teach 
at church about all the will not or who can mm-hmm. be saved mm-hmm. or uh, inherit the kingdom. There's so many scriptures that Jesus talks about. If you do these things, or Paul talks about these things, if you do, do or do these things, you will not. Yeah. And I just, I, it seems like that's a lost vernacular, vocabulary mm-hmm. when it comes to following Jesus. Mm-hmm. It's like that should cause us all to pause and shudder. Yeah. We should really take these seriously. Go mm-hmm. ahead, Stephen. I know you're ready. Well, you know, this when you pray, pray this. And then he says, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. There's so much in each mm-hmm. thing. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us bread, our daily day, our daily bread, for, and forgive us our trusts, our debts, as we forgive those mm-hmm. who have debts against us. We also have forgiven. So, yeah. And then, and then verse four, the very first thing he says after that is for... If you forgive others your transgressions, mm-hmm. you will be forgiven. But if you do not, you will not. Right. And I always think about, you know, what hope have I if I'm not forgiven? Mm-hmm. Only one sin is enough to cause you death. Wow. Only one sin causes judgment. And I committed one sin. By the time you're you 12. Know, yeah, whenever, mm-hmm. I, whenever you're able to have sin... You did it. I did it. I probably didn't get past the start line, you know? <laughs> like the bell went off and I was sinning before... You fumbled. Yeah. I possibly yeah. was because I'm not sure the exact day or hour that happens, but it was a day after the day of what, what's it called accountability. Yeah, the day that of accountability. Morning, when I reached the age of accountability, yeah, we we fumbled. I I did not make it through that day for sure. <laughs> and Jesus says it in several other places that if you forgive, you'll be forgiven. If you do not forgive, you will not be forgiven. And what hope has a man unless he forgive? And and. What I have found in, in many years of walking with Jesus is that the definition of forgiveness is always different mm-hmm. when you hear other people, when different people say it. And I, and I really was like, you know, at one time people really were trying to convince me that if you haven't forgotten, you haven't forgiven. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking, yeah, but, ha- you know, I have things I can forget. You know, like someone slighted me, cut me off on the freeway. Someone took, even took stuff. Yeah. I can forget that. But some people have the most horrible tragedies mm-hmm. happen to them that they can't forgive, that they can never forget. And is it really reasonable to require someone to forget mm-hmm. when someone ab- abused them, tortured them, killed their loved ones? Mm-hmm. Right. But still, they have to forgive. You must forgive to be forgiven. And it's like, what it must mean something. It must, there must be something that a man can do. Mm-hmm. Now, when will it ever stop hurting that someone killed my loved ones? A murderer killed my loved ones. Mm-hmm. Random shooting was a total stranger even, you know. How can I forgive them? Well, I believe that the definition of the word forgive is the most important thing to the subject. And that is that we don't want them punished for what they did to me. We see this in Stephen Stoning in the book of Acts where he said, Father, forgive them. And Jesus on the cross, the very people doing things to him, he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They don't really know they're killing the Son of God. And please, and what it means is please don't punish them for what they did to me. And I think back on all the things, whether it's cutting me off on the freeway or killing someone that I love, you know, I still have to forgive. And so it has to be definable as something possible because you could never forgive. The, the, the woman could never forgive the rapist. The child could never forgive the molest, forget Mm -hmm. the molester. Um, there, and there are so many more horrors, you know, that men have done to men, torturers Mm -hmm. and blah, 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 you know? Yeah. And you have to be able to say, father, don't punish them. I will be all right for Mm -hmm. what they've done for me. And I think Peter saying, Father, let nobody be punished for stoning me today. I know that people are going to go and be judged and they're going to be held accountable to their lifestyle. You know, they, they also on their first day committed that sin. They also missed the mark right away, just like I did. And how will they get to heaven? Well, they're going to have to find Jesus Christ. Hmm. But one thing that's, that, that is really important to heaven that doesn't happen is that they get punished one iota for what they did to me. Mm. Come on. If I want to not be punished for what I've done, I have to make sure nobody's punished for what they've done to me. Yeah. 
And I would say that would be the best definition I know of forgiveness, that I don't want you punished. I don't want bad things to happen to you because you did bad things happen to me. Yeah. And I think that even in Christianity today, people want bad things to happen to people mm. who did bad things. Mm. Yeah, I and that. it's really kind of very yeah. difficult. If you think, oh, I've forgiven everyone. Well, I mean, until you've defined it correctly and really examined the what your motive is, you really don't want them punished for what they did to you. You know, that's kind of hard to believe. You know, you take the wicked manager. But I guess he's not the wicked. He was the wicked servant. The yeah. king to get finds a servant that owes him ten thousand and he calls him to get you know in front of him and the guy cries out for mercy and he forgives him in matthew 18 and he leaves there and someone owes him a smaller amount a much smaller amount and he takes the guy and the guy begs him for forgiveness but he won't forgive him mm-hmm. and when the king hears of it it gets back to the king the king pulls him back in and says, shouldn't you have forgiven after I forgave you this huge debt? Shouldn't you have forgiven someone a smaller debt? Yeah. But because you haven't, I'm going to throw you in. You're going to go into prison and you're not going to get out till you've paid every cent. Mm-hmm. And the worst part of that whole story is the last phrase. <clears throat> he says, this is how your heavenly father will deal with you if you do not forgive so your brother. Scary. Yep. And um, I'm pretty sure... If you were to ask a crowd of people one at a time, do you think that the sins that Jesus forgave you of can ever be placed back on you? Mm. Can you ever have to pay for your sins once Jesus has forgiven them? And, you know, you can quote the scriptures of removed as far as the east is from the west, you know, see it for forgetfulness, all the things that remembered no more. But what it's saying is they'll be remembered Mm. if you don't forgive. Wow. Mm. And what he said here, your heavenly father will deal with you like this. If you do not forgive your brother, what it's demonstrating is that the sins that you committed and were forgiven of, you were let go. The king let you go, but you're going to be put in jail until you pay every cent. Your, your sins can be put back on you if you don't forgive. That's how important this subject is. And so we're just talking about a little today, just on a brief, you know, brief little podcast, but it's something to really consider that if my sins, any of them aren't forgiven, I'm in big trouble. Yeah. I'm talking about eternity. You know, it's not just a momentary something. And, you know, there is a negative in this life, but we're talking about eternity forever based on the decision we make. It has an eternal consequence that I'm, I find hard to even fathom. Yeah. And so that's why the importance of forgiveness is in our messages is because everybody wants to stand before God with Jesus covering their sins. Mm. And if there's ever been a condition, it's this one. Mm. You will not be forgiven. It says, and I'm like, Oh man, that's pretty direct. Wow. If you don't forgive, you will not be forgiven. That's worth looking at. It's not milk toast. Is it? No, it's not, there's no, it's not ambiguous at all. And you know, I can actually, with all honesty, say I think all of us can. I'm not really sure I've forgiven everybody. I know. But someone does know. Mm-hmm. And we're supposed to, the starting words, our Father in heaven. Mm-hmm. He knows. Christians are really must have a Father in heaven. And he knows if you've forgiven. And you can ask him, Lord, in prayer, you can ask him, Lord, would you show me anybody that mm-hmm. I need to forgive? Or I need to ask for mm-hmm. forgiveness and help them forgive. Yeah. Didn't you have a yeah. bit of a story That's like oh that? Oh my goodness! Yeah. <laughs> he said more than one. Actually, I think he spoke so out I, a few times. I really wasn't very attuned to this. I, I really wasn't. You know, like for me, it's all under the blood. It's one and done. It is. It, it, it is before, finished. Before the you yeah. like this. Yeah. And and in the process of learning inner healing and importance the importance of forgiveness, of forgiveness I learned it from. Uh, John and Carol Arnott, and I was really angry with their with them sharing this. I was really angry with them for sharing this, and probably shows you just need forgiveness uh, yeah, right there. Yeah, he was yeah, angry was really like, at them teaching like, that. You know, like yeah. the, the great big devil and little bitty God is what I thought they were trying to say, and they, I couldn't have been further from the truth. You know, and I came you were home. Wrong? Were, you, were you wrong? Dead wrong. Straight so up wrong. Came, really. Say yeah, it one more time. For a long time. Oh, yeah, yeah, I like that. <laughs> and uh, It's on record. 
So I ended up praying in my revelation during the course of my revelation. I ended up praying, Lord, if there's anybody I need to forgive, <laughs> would you show them to me? And over the next two weeks, I mean, it had to be 200 people. <laughs> Everywhere I went, I'd pull up to a stop sign. I'd be sitting there just thinking, in you know, I, town. in those days, I was thinking about all the different housing issues, you know, schedules for each house. Did I have them up? You know, mm -hmm. is everybody going in the right direction? If I informed everybody that their house is ready for them, you know, to drywall or to insulate or to wire or whatever, roof, all the different things. And um, I just looked to my right, sitting at a stop sign, a person sitting, just sitting there, just, they're not looking at me, they're just, Oh, wow. And that like person, them. that person doesn't like me and I don't like them. Yeah. And I'd pray through it. Lord, would you forgive me? And I ask you to forgive them. Any, any I have. And it just went on and on every, I, I, I come around a corner in a supermarket, two carts crash. <laughs> <clears throat> uh oh. <laughs> and when it's face to face, I, every time would say, Hey, listen, I, I'm, I'm really sorry about what happened in the past. Would you forgive me? And, um, then I would pray after they left. Yes, Lord, would you, can you, would you let me forgive them when not punished? Not let anything bad ever happen to them mm. for what I perceived as a wrong. Mm. And I just was going on and on. I mean, I I chasing people down aisles in grocery stores. It was 200 at least. <laughs> really? You think it was 200? Oh, it was so many. It was all day, every day for two weeks straight. Just <laughs> everywhere. Everywhere I went, I went into, I remember going into, well, it used to be called Lucky's, I think. And um, this guy that, I mean, this pastor even, he attacked me on a basketball court, was all mad at me. I didn't know what was wrong. I didn't know what he was mad about. Chased him down and said, oh, do you remember that day? Went to a baseball game, the high school baseball game, up in the stands is full of Little League parents who are just all mad at me from Little You're League. You're talking about a very small town. Yeah. <laughs> You're yeah. not talking about Chicago. You're talking it about Oroville. It yeah. was shocking how much, you know. I happen to know that particular guy in the stands that place so that day, he was at the uh, outreach last week at the municipal auditorium giving his life to Jesus. Wow. And a little old man now, like me. Wow. And, um, Significant. And, you know, I remember, I remember that, that event in the stands, me saying, hey, listen, man, I don't know what happened between us, you know. We even coached All-Stars together and had a great time together. And then after that, it all went south. I said, I don't know what's wrong. I don't, I don't, I don't really remember everything that happened, but if I offended you, would you forgive me? Oh, man, he was so happy. And then I went away and prayed through, Lord, anything he did to me, whatever perception I had of him wronging me, I just ask you to let him go, Lord. Don't punish him for any of that. Don't let anything bad happen to him. I, I release him and forgive him. That's 25, 23 years ago. Long time ago. Yeah. yeah, it was after the Father's house started, so. And it was terrible. It was just terrible. <laughs> but in the end, it was so freeing. It was unbelievable. It really is a phenomenal experience mm -hmm. to begin to understand forgiveness yeah. to realize maybe i haven't forgiven everybody mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's kind of an important thing scary to yeah. read this it's really an important thing to do to just pause put put yourself on pause and let the lord who knows the truth mm. show you the truth it's really good so vicky one of the things I know you've encountered over the years of doing and healing ministry with people as often. Yeah. You'll suggest to somebody that, you know, uh, let's just, we'll talk about fathers and mothers for a second because yeah. a lot of our hurts are there. Come from that. And you'll, you know, people will be talking about their father or mother and how, you know, hurt they've been. And, yeah. and then you'll say to them, do you think that you might need to forgive? And they say no. No. Because they've forgiven him already. Yes. Yeah. So what would you? So would you that's on that's that? really good because honestly, we never want to dishonor our parents, and um, you know, Steve and I were really good parents, but we weren't perfect. And and Satan comes to kill, rob, and destroy. And and what we're seeing as kids get older is that he really does. He really goes after kids. Um, and you know, like one kid, one one of our kids was like came to us and said, "You didn't spend enough time with us." And the other one said, "You spent too much time with us." And it's like, and we spent the same amount of time, but. What the deal is, is that really getting honest with the Holy Spirit, because I think we talked a few weeks ago, the Holy Spirit's a counselor. Mm -hmm. And um, when Steve and I started the Father's House, we didn't really have this, like he, Steve was just talking about, we didn't really have this revelation mm -hmm. that the kind of forgiveness that Jesus is talking about, the forgiving and letting go is so significant. We would, before 
uh, the revelation that we he was talking about, we would say, oh, we forgive you. Mm -hmm. But we'd see you at the store and we'd go the other way. Um, you know, we forgive our moms and dads, you know, but yet little triggers would just cause us to get so angry. Um, so with prayer ministry, I, like I, I, there's one guy who said, you know, oh, yeah, I forget my dad, you know, and I'm like, well, can you just maybe humor me? Mm -hmm. So and in the inner healing process in the in the room together with me and another person, I just said, Dad, I confess out loud you hurt me. And the, it was like a dam broke and it went on for I think I wrote seven pages of what his pain was mm -hmm. as a child because oftentimes as adults we just kind of wrap it up and put it under in, in you know where the Christmas ornaments go under the stairs or in the, in the garage and <clears throat> when you're really real and allow the Holy Spirit to show you that what you felt like at, mm -hmm. at different times he'll bring back memories um, it's, and we just the first time Steve did it um, it was, I mean, within, it was coaches, and he was abused by coaches in high school, and he went through this deep forgiveness, um, and within three days, this is no lie, within three days, because uh, three different coaches came up to him, and they were released in the spirit because he had so much hate and anger mm -hmm. from what he, happened to him when he was a child that it affected him now. It's called a boot boomerang judgment. Mm -hmm. And we, we looked at each other like, there is something to this forgiveness, this deep forgiveness. And the way it goes is actually you get the emotions out. You actually use the adjectives, and it's very confidential. Your mom or dad will never know that you said that about them um, or your friend or your little league coach. But it really is have, giving voice to your pain. And you, you did this, you did that, you did this, you hurt me. And but, and there's always a big but, big, big but, is that, but unless I forgive you, I can't be forgiven. Mm -hmm. So even, even, um, and we're not saying that you, you know, like you've been raped or, you know, abused. We're not saying that you go back to that person. Mm -hmm. We're just, what we're saying is that you're going to get free from the jail that you're still in. And you're going to get, f with forgiveness, it allows you to give him a gift that he doesn't deserve or she doesn't deserve but do not hold this against Jesus. Do not hold them, this against them on my account. Yeah. Now, he, he, it may be held against them on someone else's account, mm -hmm. but unless you forgive, you cannot be forgiven. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter what's happened to you. You have to go deep, and you have to forgive. Does so, it, did I answer that's that? That's good. So just saying, just, oh, I said I forgive them yeah, one that day, doesn't, it doesn't necessarily No, I, if you're still running away from people, and if every time their name comes up, the hair on the back of your neck actually rises up, they still control you. And that's the thing is that when you deeply, deeply forgive, you get free from the jail that they put you in all those years ago. There is no control, there is no pain. There's still pain, but there's not, it's not the, the, the deep pain where it causes you to just be in control by their actions. So yeah, for years and years we thought, oh yeah, I forgive you, I forgive you, but Knowing the difference now, we didn't forgive them. We said the words like a magic wand. We said the words like an incantation, but there was no forgiveness. I mean, and in marriage, sometimes you just got to get together with your prayer counselor and just talk. You know, you get hurt in marriage. Things are said, things are done, and, you know, it's a lifetime of commi a commitment. So you want to make it amicable and wonderful. And, and so we've done that even with our with each other. And, and no, I've prayed forgiveness mm -hmm. with someone else regarding mm -hmm. him because if I said those words to him he'd be devastated mm -hmm. and I've said things I wish I hadn't said obviously but so it's it's a forgiveness and for I want her punished for them <laughs> <laughs> oh wait wait no did I just blow it I'm yeah sorry. yes yeah he does no, no um, he does no he doesn't <laughs> but I mean it's it's like you know you're, yeah. you're with each other every day of your life yeah. and there's situ it's you're in valleys right. and you're That's on good. mountains and and just some things that he does irritates the crud out of me and vice versa. Yeah. So forgiveness is the most important. This is the most important thing that you'll ever do after asking Jesus into your life is deep, deep, deep forgiveness. That's good. And, you know, you, you touched on a couple, like, uh, key points that I think it's always worth talking about is one is uh, that when you do this forgiveness work, you don't need to go and tell no, no, please it. don't. 
Don't. I, I did that with Steve one time. <laughs> I had this big revelation from when we were first were married. Steve said something to me, and I would mock him for years and years, make fun of what he said to me in his ignorance and stupidity of being a new groom, being a freaked out groom. And so finally, it's like, Lord, is this an inner healing issue? And he showed me an instance where Steve said something and how bad it hurt at that moment mm-hmm. when I was first married, new bride, insecure. And so I, I just thought he'd be really happy to know that I forgave him. And I don't think you were that happy, were no. you? <laughs> that no. he blew it. So, I mean, it was an immense, it was, Steve doesn't like to make mistakes. None of us do, but this was, this was a big one. Yeah. And he really hurt me. And so, yeah, no, when you, when you forgive someone, you shouldn't go up to them and say that. In fact, at a church we were at years and years and years ago, the guy would talk about forgiveness, but it wasn't this kind of forgiveness. It was just, it was like a one-dimensional forgiveness. But no jokes. People would line up on the row next to us to forgive Steve and I. And they would say, I've always hated you. I've always hated I, you. I never liked you. you. I think you're arrogant. I think you're this. And it's like, that's not forgiveness. No. That's just making, putting your pain on someone else. Right. Yeah, making that's, them a, that's miserable. a good definition. Putting your pain on someone else. And then another point is that... Uh, you know, a, a thing that I'll hear a lot is, I, I only want to forgive once I've got an apology. <laughs> well, then you're screwed. <laughs> yeah, that's not really going to work out too yeah. well for you. No, I do like when Steve apologizes first. Then I can oh, apologize. <laughs> it does make life easier, but it's it not, does but it's not always I think it'd be better possible. if we talk about somebody else's relationship. <laughs> <laughs> We've been married 40, yeah. 40 yeah. four years. And then... <laughs> Steve, could you just elaborate a little and bit more? She on? remembers oh, every yeah. <laughs> minute. No, I don't actually. Any, go ahead. No, I uh, want to because I can score keep, but no. every, oh, and she doesn't. <laughs> oh, that's true. You know, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, but we just that digress. that idea of uh, if I forgive somebody, am I letting them back into my life? Do good. I trust them again? Can you? Just, <sighs> that's you a that's a good yeah. question, a good and question. people are really weird about this. <laughs> it sometimes, sometimes, yeah. every once in a while, someone's really strange about it. <laughs> it's easy yeah, question to ask, you know, like obviously people can really change. Mm-hmm. And people say people don't change, but that's not true. People change. I've changed. I have changed. Mm-hmm. I am totally, totally different than that guy. Yeah, me too. The guy that was formed by all the hurt and betrayal though. and all the different, you know, not getting any credit for what you do. Those that guy that became bitter and he just doesn't exist anymore. So I know people can change. Absolutely. With Jesus. But, with Jesus. So just take for instance those subjects I was talking about molestation. You got you got whatever you decide this is has to cover everything. It has to cover murder, mm-hmm. yeah. betrayal, yeah. Uh, complete accidents. Uh, I mean there have been people especially musicians and actors who've had <coughs> agents completely make them poor. Mm-hmm. They went from being rich to poor, and it was all they were they were ripped off, right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, many people who've had third parties steal everything they have, um, molestation, mm-hmm. molesters, abuse, physical, abuse, physical, physical abuse. By their moms um, and dads. You know, I, I don't know if I said murder or not, but yeah. it, all of the above, right, has to fit in this definition. All the big daddies. They all have to yep. fit in this definition. So let's just say, you know, a guy molests your children. Mm-hmm. And heaven forbid, but let's just use that as the example. It's a horrible one. And he repents. He's so sorry. Weeping, crying, begging you. And you finally can do it. You say, Lord, don't punish him for molesting my children. Mm -hmm. And your daughter says, Lord, don't punish him for molesting me. Mm -hmm. And you take off the table God's punishment for him in the future. From you. From you, mm-hmm. uh, for for anything he did, he did to you. me, yeah. Correct. God punishing for his sins against me. Um, so let's say it's all said and done; it's all good. You actually are kind of feeling healthy and whole from it. You've mm-hmm. been set free because you forgave him. Mm-hmm. Your daughter's starting to heal, and he comes around, and there he is standing in front of you, and he says, "Would you trust me to babysit your children?" Mm-hmm. And I. I think that there are a number of people who have defined forgiveness as you must. Mm. Yeah, if you really forgave him, you have to. But that's not forgiveness. And any any definition of forgiveness that says that. Like the pastor molested you, but can he still be your pastor? Mm. The your brother, does he still have to remain he's still your brother, 
No, but he destroyed that position, right? So, so then does he have the position of brother in your life? And no, you don't have to give back the molester, the killer, the, the thief. You don't Are have you to, sure? like, like the guy steals all your possessions and you go make more money, but now you need a new manager and he wants to apply for the job. Does he get the job after he robbed you last time? Well, if you forgive him, which you must forgive him, all you've simply said is before God, I don't want you punished. Mm -hmm. Maybe he gets arrested for it and you testify. Yes, civil authority will punish him. Mm -hmm. But God, you're praying that God won't punish him. The consequences of an action is in a civil situation. He still gets goes to jail for ripping you off, for molesting your children, for killing your brother, for whatever it is, right? But do you then let him have that position back, right? And the answer can't be that only... It's only forgiveness if you can. Hmm. The answer has to be, I can forgive you and not let you babysit my children. Or not be your friend. I can forgive you and not want you in my life. Mm -hmm. All it means is, Lord, don't punish them. When they stand before you to be punished, I know they'll be punished for their sins. I know that, you know, unless they find Jesus, mm -hmm. they won't, they will be punished. But make sure they're not punished for anything they did to me. That's really good. That's the only definition I know of that works for it all. Then I can then I can go ahead and press charges against the guy who molested my children. I can press charges against the guy who civil. assaulted me. Mm -hmm. I can press charges against people in a civil manner, and um, and still be accomplishing forgiveness. Mm -hmm. You know, that's good. Yeah. So this forgiveness topic, it's. Like we said, it's not something that you can just sort of say one time or, no. right. you know, and there's, there's the level of forgiveness. We talked a lot about the, the big things like right. that, right, right. but I just want to take a moment to talk about like with, with forgiveness, unforgiveness is also the, the word of offense, right? That gets put into that right. same category. And that can be more like the little things like, you know, that's probably more the marriages. If you have a good marriage right. or, or just the person that cut, or the person that cut you off yeah. at, out when you drive oh. or the work colleague or the whoever right yeah. the person at church that took your seat or well, the, you know. the guy the guy in the purple honda in sacramento who took my spot when i was you know yeah. like that i mean right. that, that, that guy kind of, that guy bless no one him specific yeah he's like a purple honda he's got a license plate lq yeah, the guy, the f11 guy. but i forgive him yeah that's right, right yeah but I, I, you know just to mention as well as well as the deep things those little things have a way of stacking up in our lives oh and, and robbing joy peace and all of that too right so it's taken evaluation honestly those happen are so those are sublime and they happen like you said like building blocks and all of a sudden you don't <clears throat> you don't realize mm -hmm. those little offenses and also the secondhand offenses mm -hmm. someone's mean to you so then i'm mad at them because they're mean to you mm -hmm. or you know with my mm -hmm. husband he comes home and tells me something well now i'm mad because someone did something to him. Yeah. So even the secondhand offenses are wrong. They're, yeah. they're terrible. It's yeah. terrible. And, and, and it, so we have made a practice now because we've been doing this now for being offended for 150 years. <laughs> yeah, we're, we, are, <laughs> we're, we are experts. We're masters in, in offenses. Yeah. Um, yeah. Grandmasters. Yeah. <laughs> grand poobas. Um, we, we just right away t t with each other, you know, um, we just right away say, you did this, you did that. You know, we just speak it out. You know, you cut me off. You took my parking space. You know, that was rude. You're, you're even, I, you know, like you're an idiot. We call them. We actually call them the names that mm -hmm. we actually think of, mm -hmm. and I think that's really not important. to the person. No, never to the person. <laughs> Again, never to the person. Yeah. And not, you're not talking about saying it to me. No, I'm like just, we'll just feel just the feelings. Yeah. Like, each other yes. about someone else. Correct. Yeah. So it's like with, so we gossip in yeah. inner healing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh for instance like a kidding, few weeks, kidding, kidding. Few weeks ago i did have this guy was i had my blinker on yes. we're downtown sacramento waiting to go to a restaurant and in sacramento there's no there's not parking spaces so i'm literally waiting for the guy to come by so i can turn into the parking space and he just whips in takes a ride takes my parking space and i was i was really angry uh, my friend pam said i've never seen you like that i was literally he, then he was in the restaurant i stared at him while he's ordering <laughs> Um, I made comments like, I don't want to sit near him, you know, really Christian. And, uh, you know, I was really Pastor Vicky that day. And it just even even something like that was like that. I'm I'm offended with him. I am. I want him to be punished a little bit. 
because that was really rude. Mm-hmm. And I can't even understand that people could be that rude. Mm-hmm. I'm just not that rude, except maybe to you sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, just kidding. But um, so even those little things like that, I need to forgive him. Because mm-hmm. really, honestly, in the scheme of my life, this guy might be going to hell, right. and I'm and I'm mad at him because he took, he he was rude. So even those little things right away, it's like you know, but I forgive you, and I don't want the Lord to, to hold mm-hmm. this against you. I'll walk the extra block yeah. to get to to the restaurant. So there's a thing, and let me just I might be changing the subject, but like there's a there's a category that. of this that is kind of interesting. It's when someone takes your possessions, mm-hmm. or someone takes your money. Are oh, you going to talk about that? Or That's they. Good get you they wreck you wreck something Mm -hmm. it's kind of interesting why that seems to be different even in the story i quoted or talked about the wicked manager Mm -hmm. but forgive me a debt Mm -hmm. well i have to forgive the debt even though civil authorities might say he has to pay it back Mm -hmm. i have to forgive that debt and it's like you know i it's it's like i i'm not allowed to um i mean it's not i'm not allowed to pursue that and because I think it's because the possessions, when we give our life to Jesus, we are supposed to be bought with a price. Good. Our every we, what he's buying is lock, stock, and barrel, so hook, line, and sinker, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's supposed to come with my wallet and everything else. And your family. And my family. And so I'm really not supposed to own anything. Own it and really feel possessive about it. So when I say I forgive them, it's like. I don't want them punished for what they did to me. But when they take my doors or my, they steal my building materials or they steal my money, mm-hmm. really it's, Lord, they took your money. That's what you got to get to. And you, that's where you've got to get to. It's like, I remember having $1,200 doors stolen. I think I've told this on this show before, but I'm driving all over town, man. I am just, in the south side is where these people were ripping me off. So I'm going up and down the street. Just I'm mad. I'm so <laughs> fired up. I'm going to catch them. I'm going to get them. Because in Southside, if you have new doors in your house back then, yeah. it would be very obvious. These doors are 12 or 1,200 <laughs> each 20 years ago. I mean, come on, think of this. It would be like in the and, Yeah, like, <laughs> this, like what's that ratty old house have a $1,200 front door? So I'm looking all over. Who's fixing their front door? Who's doing what? You know, I'm just like, <laughs> and the Lord just said, what are you mad about? And I said, Lord, they stole, they stole my doors. And he said, whose doors? I said, oh, dang it. Dang it. <laughs> They're your, your doors. doors, Lord. They stole your doors, and I'm all upset about it. I'm, I'm mad they stole I'm your doors. I'm mad for you, Jesus. <laughs> he said, what if I wanted them to have it? Freely okay, Lord. Given. Lord, they were your doors. You could have protected them. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I really, and I repented. And it was really a huge daily lesson. It's just a lesson that would walk with me daily from then on. And it, still mm-hmm. to this day. I'm constantly reminded uh, when someone steals something. I just looked in the back of my truck and noticed something missing. And I'm hoping I put it somewhere else, but it's missing. And the immediately it's like, well, it could have been so-and-so, it could have been yeah. so-and-so. But mm-hmm. it's like, Lord, they took your stuff. Mm-hmm. And if you want them to have it, that's fine. If you don't, awesome. Lord, have them just convict them to bring it back. And if not, if that's what you want, them to have your stuff, that's fine. They took your stuff, not mm-hmm. my stuff. And just move on. And I think that that makes the anonymous person even don't and Lord don't hold this against yes. them. Mm-hmm. They they took your stuff and it's up you know mm-hmm. you it's yours. You could have protected it. You didn't. Just like my house when it burned down, I knew I had arrived when I said I saw the house in a pile of ashes smoldering. You arrived that day. <laughs> it was two o'clock in the morning. You know. <laughs> you might not arrive tomorrow, but you arrived yeah. that day. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of arrived. I really knew that I'd made this transition in yeah. possession when I looked and. The first thought was Little League pictures and all of the mementos of my kids' mm-hmm. lives, Danielle's trophies from basketball, Nicole's, all the th- many things she earned in her life, you know, awards and mm-hmm. videos of her little plays she used to be in. And um, it was such so amazing. And I first thought was that, like, ah, oh, and I said, and it was, you know, like, what's all of a sudden it dawned on me, you could have protected this house. You could have protected this house from the fire, and you didn't. And it's your house, so you can do anything you want. And I knew, you know, I've really, I've come far. 
I didn't have to drive up and down the street screaming, like, where's my doors? I, I looked at this house and said, that was your house. Amen. Everything we own, it was in, everything we own is gone. Only what Vicky grabbed going out the door <laughs> did I have. I had one pair of cowboy boots. I was really appreciative of that. Yeah, because you want the other ones. Yeah, I yeah. wanted the other ones also. <laughs> but, um, That's the one thing you regret. I really Taylor guitar. No, I was my Taylor guitar, yeah. Anyway, I just, it was so strange to know, wow. I really came to that. It's not my possession. We've moved mm-hmm. up zero. And it's way easier to forgive people on possessions and not try to get the civil authorities to punish them and say, oh, I forgive them. They won't be punished by God, but they're going to jail. Mm-hmm. And it's so much easier to do it right and really just forgive them totally and let them have it. No, they did not steal that from me. I will give it to them. Yeah. And says. I will give it to them, and then they're not thieves. That's good. Now, they're not guilty. I absolve them in more than one way. Then I say, Lord, forgive them for any wrong they did. And I think that the story of the wicked manager that Steve quoted at the beginning, mm-hmm. top of the broadcast, is, is so indicative of how vastly important it is that our Father in Heaven wants us to forgive. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think if you, I think it could actually change your theology regarding salvation mm-hmm. because it says at the end it says all of it you know all of it will be put back on you is that the one about the torturers too yeah at the end? and it, it, it right. is yeah it mm-hmm. says uh yeah he'll turn you over to torturers no, it says it, he'll go to the jail and not get out till he received pays every penny that's but anyway it's it's like it's like you were forgiven and you did not forgive and so everything's put back on you yeah. i think it's it's it dispels, Let me, i'll read it it says should you not also have had mercy on your fellow slave in the same way that I had mercy on you? And his Lord moved with anger and handed him over to the torturers until mm-hmm. he should repay all that was owed him. Torturers? My yeah. he- and my Heavenly Father will also do the same to you if each of you does not forgive his brother you re- from your heart. So my Heavenly Father will also do the same to you yes. if you don't forgive from your heart. Yes, your brother from your heart, yeah. Say again? Your brother from your heart. Yeah, turn yeah. your you over to the tortures. Your brother from the tortures. I mean, it's like, where, where is that in modern-day Christianity? Yeah. Do, can we, do we just X that out with to get a little Sharpie and scratch that out? <laughs> no, he's talking about that you were, you were forgiven mm-hmm. of many things, and then you're not going to forgive the guy that does mm-hmm. littler things to you, and it's all, it, all your sins are put back on you. Well, that mm-hmm. scares me. And I don't want that. I don't want my sin to put, be put back on me. I want to get through the narrow door. I want to finish the race that I might attain a t- eternal yeah. life. Not that I have, but that I might. And th- th- that right there, if you just lived your life based on this scripture, if you only had one sc- one chapter, one thing to read, Matthew six would be the best place to hang out with. Mm-hmm. And, you right? got you to get that one right. Yeah. If you're gonna get anything right, it's that one. It's that one. Yeah. yeah, well, I think that is a good place for us. Yeah, this to could be. This could be. We could teach on this every plan. week for the rest of our lives. This is such an important one. Yeah. The importance of forgiveness. Would you just pray for anybody that's listening that yes. they might need to forgive? Yes, and for me yes. too, yeah. Lord, Lord. If you would be bold enough out there to say, Lord, show me anyone I have not forgiven, like you want me to forgive. Yeah. Because I believe the Holy Spirit, you will run into many people like Steve did that you have not forgiven. And then go about the business of being in a life of forgiveness. So Holy Spirit, I give you permission to show me anyone I have not mm-hmm. forgiven today, Lord, that I haven't done this for a while. And then Lord, I I want to know if there's anyone I haven't forgiven. And if you feel like that's for you, just pray it. Ask, Give the Holy Spirit just open doors for you to be forgiven. That's right. We bless you. We pray that you have a great week. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Have a great week. See you next time. Bye.